Well, everybody, this is DFS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about today's uh, soccer EPL slate. It's one of those uh, rare weekday slates, but it's a very exciting one. We have a four game slate. Um, we have Chelsea as uh, probably the biggest favorite, um, but not you know, as big as like we've seen with uh, Man City or Liverpool or Arsenal. Chelsea is a notch below, in my opinion, um, and they're playing against uh, Southampton at Southampton. So Chelsea is on the road. So that kind of tells you um, that it's going to be a very tight uh, slate where I do not expect as many goals uh, on this slate as the last one on Saturday, where Liverpool themselves uh scored nine goals i think they were they did um so you know chelsea is not the type of an offensive juggernaut like man city or liverpool where they can break a slate uh, on their own um so yeah i think it's going to be an interesting slate so chelsea is a favorite on that game in that matchup and then the biggest uh the second biggest favorite is at home with crystal palace and then Leeds United in their respective matches. Crystal Palace is at plus 110 at home against Brentford, and then Leeds United is at uh, plus 110 as well at home against Everton, and then uh, Brighton and Fulham is the other match on that on the slate, um, where Brighton on the road is a favorite at plus 130. <clears throat> so... Like I said, close matchup, close uh, close matchups, and very tight slate. So I think it's gonna be important to focus on the high floor plays, in my opinion, on, on a slate like this, where the goals, you know, where the goals are not expected to be scored as many times as as much as uh, previous slates. Um, so yeah, let's talk about those high floor plays um, on this video. So I'll start with the Chelsea uh, matchup because, like I said, Chelsea on the road is the biggest favorite. But we actually have a very important breaking news um, that I would like to share. I posted it in our Discord uh, server for True DFS. But uh, Reese James is expected uh, not to play in this game. And the rumor is that he did not even travel with Chelsea uh, to Southampton uh, on this trip. So Reese James is not going to be playing as as expected here. So I fully expect Loftus Cheek here on the right flank. Um, and I only say that because Chelsea fullbacks are probably the must uh, to have. At least one of them is a must have for a high floor play uh, on this slate. So. Loftus Cheek probably on the right flank, um, and either Cucurella or Ben Chilwell is on gonna be on the on the left side. And then who let's see who's gonna be in the back three, uh, especially in place of Reese James. And there it's it's a possibility where Cucurella could step back here or Koulibaly could do the right side and Cucurella stay on the left side, but in the back three, and then um uh, ben Chilwell could start here in place of Cucurella here, more in the in the advanced role. And I apologize for my uh, voice <clears throat> as I'm kind of sick uh, today. But yeah, I just wanted to still wanted to make this video. But like I said, Chelsea fullbacks are probably a priority in my opinion um, on any slate like this, where uh, those guys are probably gonna cross a lot, you know, cross the ball a lot and have high floor points in my opinion so so I'll, I'll share my thoughts once the starting uh 11 is confirmed but i would just kind of target the fullbacks that start in those positions and then after that it's i mean really mason mount um even though he uh does not have as much of a monopoly on set pieces um he's still a Good GPP play and open play, and then Sterling and Havertz. I think Havertz makes the best interesting, uh, make, makes the mo most interesting GPP play if given his low price. Um, I think eventually, I mean, he's going to score a goal. I mean, he he is a <clears throat> striker. Um, last year, like he had a stretch of like five games where he scored like <laughs> a brace and a hat trick in almost every game. Uh, during that stretch so uh so i mean that's gonna come at some point in this season i mean you just kind of get gonna 
get ahead of the curve, in my opinion, um, and go from there. But Sterling will be popular, in my opinion, even though he's like 10.2K. I think he's expensive. Um, I think he makes it a decent GPP play. But like I said, Chelsea is not the type of a team where they would score like five plus goals, right? So I don't think he not having him would kill you in a cash slate, in my opinion. And same for Mason Mount. So I would just focus on the high floor plays, like I said, for Chelsea. And then Southampton, yeah, I mean, I think they're the biggest underdog on the slate, naturally, playing against Chelsea. But I think Ward Prowse still has a decent floor here. I mean, he has a monopoly on set pieces, corner kicks, free kicks, and then also penalty kicks. Um, and he is playing with the guy who is in form with Che Adams. So I like I like Southampton as a deep GPP play. Um, I think Chelsea is gonna dominate the ball, even uh, even though that you know will most likely happen. I think Southampton has a pretty good shot at upsetting Chelsea here today at home. Uh, Southampton has been just so up and down. I think they played okay in the last series out uh, in the last uh, matchup <clears throat> for Southampton. Um, I think Ward Prowse and Adams are probably going to be my high priorities. And then I think for GPP, any of these three guys, Adam Armstrong, El Yunusi, and Aribo, are the cheap forwards that you could probably plug in and hoping for a goal. Um, so I think I think those are good. I think their fullbacks are not uh, my priority because they'll probably sit back a little more. Uh, you know, defending against the Chelsea fullbacks. So I'm not interested in any of the Parade or Walker Peters or uh, Janepo if he starts. Um, I think Chelsea's going to dominate the ball possession. But on the counterattack, I mean, yeah, Ward Prowse and Adams could definitely have a role in, in one of those goals if they score, on, uh, you know, at home. But I fully expect Chelsea to dominate. I think, I think Chelsea should win this matchup. Crystal Palace versus Brentford. Like I said, Crystal Palace is a favorite at home at plus uh, 110. Uh, for Crystal Palace, it's going to be interesting. Uh, more than any team on this slate, uh, it's going to be important to look at their starting lineups, uh, lineup because Eberechi Eze is one of the most, uh, one of the highest floor guys on this slate. Um, if he is playing without Michael Olise or Will Hughes or Luka Milinovic, uh, I think. If Eze plays without any of them, he is just like a no-brainer in my opinion. I think he would then take the monopoly of the set pieces and everything. I mean, he would. He still has a decent upside in open play, crossing the ball, and create, uh, create shots, assists, uh, shots, you know, shots assisted. Uh, so I think as a makes an interesting play in my opinion just given how the starting lineup shakes out um for gpp yeah i mean zaha is out today um most likely so that puts a lot more onus on their strikers uh forwards edward i think he's a cheap gpp play that can pay off uh if you think that crystal palace will score They've been in good form lately. So, yeah, I mean, Crystal Palace can definitely do it. But that was with Zaha. So without Zaha, I don't know if they have the creativity or just the offensive flow to be able to produce the same uh, level uh, they did before. Um, but Eduard would not be a bad, not be the worst uh, punt GPP play at forward position. And then Mateta, uh, if he ends up starting. Yeah, I mean, any of these guys. I don't think I would play AU. I think his uh, pricing is like a little overboard now. Uh, just given the matchup against Brentford, I don't know if I will uh, play him. Um, And then the fullbacks, Schlupp and Ward. I mean, if Schlupp starts on the left, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'll be very interested in any of those guys, actually. So they don't like to cross the ball as much. And then Brentford on the road. Um... It's going to be a tough one. I mean, some people like Matthias Jensen if he takes, you know, he says he takes set pieces, but I think he just, he just does not have the upside in the open play to score goals or, you know, create shots. Uh, so I don't know if I'll have him, but if you are up for that, I mean, if your price somehow fits Jensen just like that, Jensen, uh, I, I mean, I would play him, but I don't see many reasons to play him. But rather, I would have the upside plays like Mbwebo and Tony. Um, I think Tony it makes a very interesting play uh, for GPP. I think um, in a 
unfavorable matchup here. I think he is going to go under owned. I think Tony makes a very interesting GPP play along with M- Mboimo. But I think this matchup is going to be pretty slow. I think it's going to be 0 0 or 1 to 0 in favor of Crystal Palace. But if you think Brentford's going to show up somehow, I mean, they look pretty bad, uh, in my opinion. I mean, they're 1 2 and 1. Same for Crystal Palace. They're about the same in the middle of the pack. But yeah, I think this is going to be a slow matchup. And then I'll go with Leeds at uh one plus one ten again at home against Everton. Um, Leeds has been playing well. I know they uh lost the last game, but I think they'll bounce back here. Um, that naturally kind of, you know, uh, has me going to uh, Jack Harrison and then Brendan Aronson. I think those two guys are probably the two favorite guys that I'm looking at. And then Sinis- Sinistera. If he he scored last game, but you know if he ends up starting, yeah, we'll have a little bit of a little bit of him as well. Uh, this game, Leeds United and Everton, generally is going to be a very high octane matchup where I think there's going to be a plenty of DFS uh, fantasy points to go around, just given their styles of play, where they are prone to making a lot of mistakes on the defensive side, but also on the offensive side, they all like to push the ball quite a bit compared to the other three matches on the slate. So I think for fantasy, uh, from the fantasy standpoint, I definitely like this matchup a lot, which, you know, so, you know, Harrison, Aronson, and then Sinistera, and then Rodrigo for GPP, definitely I'll be interested in that. Um, and then Christensen, I mean, his price has gone up, but still not to the point where I think it is justifiable. So I would definitely play him as a, you know, salary saving play uh, since he's eligible as a fullback defense, uh, defender um and then for everton i think it's gonna have to go to uh where is he mark ray out i guess he's out okay well first of all um if damari gray is out for some reason i would have to favor McNeil and Gordon. Um, but if for GPP or even for cash, I mean, I think Neil Malpe, um, he is coming from uh, Brighton. He got traded or transferred to Everton and he might start today. Um, he's a very cheap uh, forward to punt with, um, but playing in a game like this uh, between Leeds and Everton, where there are going to be a lot of uh, defensive errors where Malpe could, uh, you know, take advantage of and maximize his chances to score. Um, I I don't mind him as one of the options, but like I said, I wouldn't mind any of these guys, Gordon, McNeil, and Malpe. I know McNeil has been struggling, but against Leeds where, you know, it's going to be an open play, I don't mind him. He just does not take enough shots for me to kind of, you know, uh, justify his pricing. He likes to cross the ball. But without Gray, I mean, yeah, McNeil could definitely has has an upgrade in, in their in his usage of uh, crossing the ball and you know uh, create creating scoring chances. And then their uh, fullbacks, I'll be interested in as well. I mean, Patterson and Mekolenko, yeah, I would definitely uh, have some of the pieces there. Patterson and Mekolenko uh, for crossing upside and assist upside. So I, th- I like this matchup overall. Like I said, I think it's going to be a two to one or two to two kind of a matchup in my opinion, where there are going to be some goals to go around. Fulham versus Brighton. Brighton is a favorite on the road. <clears throat> I think Brighton is a better team and they they are one of the best defensive teams in the league. So that kind of limits the upside of Fulham, even though I actually think Pereira is the best uh, bang for buck uh, play on the slate for high floor. He takes a lot of their set pieces and he creates a lot of scoring chances uh, for Mitrovic, uh, uh, most likely. Um, So I like Pereira here today um, on the slate as a core play. So that's one of my core plays, like I said, along with the Chelsea fullbacks. Um, but Brighton, like I said, I think Brighton's going to dominate the possession. And and, and in, in the middle of that, in the center of that, Pascal Gross, uh, especially when he plays in an advanced position like this up here, uh, more on the offensive side, with the monopoly on the uh, set pieces, 
Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be a very popular play, but I think a very, very, very justifiable play, uh, just given his usage rates and given his form lately. So I like Pascal Gross for uh, Brighton. And then after that, I mean, I think it depends on how the starting lineup shakes out. Uh, with Neil Malpe gone, like I said, he is playing for Everton. Now, uh, Denise Udav could come in here at, at striker. He played well in the, uh, you know, Carabao Cup, I think, in the league match, uh, cup match, uh, where he could continue his performance here at the league match, uh, where he could come in. And I think his pricing is fair. I mean, but I think he also has the upside to score here uh, against Fulham. But he, they're on the road, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think it's a good punt play. But aside from Gross, I would have to go with uh, to Troussard and then Lamptey for a cross-crossing upside and uh, creating scoring chances. So those four guys I'm definitely interested in. And then McAllister, I'm not that interested in. Estupinian and then Veltman. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have some crossing upside. Um, I If I have to choose between them two, I'll have to go with uh, Estupinian because he likes to uh, go up a little more uh, than Veltman. And then for Fulham, like I said, Pereira is the, my core play. But after that, I mean, you can play any, any of them for GPP. Mitrovic, I think he's going to go over-owned, in my opinion, uh, just given his upside and his uh, 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 scoring history in this, uh, this season so far. But I think that's going to be a tough matchup for Fulham. Like I said, Brighton is one of the best defensive-minded teams in the league. Um, I think I'll probably fade him, but, you know, he, he definitely has the upside to break a slate where he could score more than two or three goals. But I don't think that's going to happen today. But he is, he, you know, he typically takes more than three, four shots a game. So he has the volume to do so. But aside from those guys, yeah, Anthony Robinson and Tete, um, I think they they are decent plays to go up and cross the ball quite a bit, scoring creating scoring chances. But like I said, I think if Brighton dominates the ball, uh, which I don't think they'll dominate the ball, but I think they'll you know dictate the possession possession. Uh, where Robinson and Tate are, are probably not going to get the balls as much uh, this game compared to their previous games. Um, but I think everybody else is good GPP play like Cabano and Reed. So. So, yeah, anyway, overall, like I said, I like Pereira for Fulham and then Chelsea fullbacks as my starting to go to. Uh, and then after that, I like the Leeds and Everton matchup uh, pieces from there, uh, sprinkle from there. And then for goalkeeper, yeah, I would just play anybody um, aside from maybe the Southampton goalie. Um, really, like Chelsea, even Chelsea's clean sheet uh, percentage is not that much higher than any other teams on the slate other than Southampton. So I would just play any of any goalie that kind of correlates, uh, you know, with your lineup. You obviously don't want to play the Southampton goalie if you have a lot of Chelsea pieces, right? You don't want to negatively correlate your goalkeeper selection with the rest of your team. So yeah, just remember that. And may yeah, I just make sure your lineup makes sense when you after you build it out, uh, just based on your game narratives. I think that's a, that's probably the most important thing in soccer DFS. Um, just to think about what will most likely happen in, in those scenarios. Uh, like if you are correlating, like you want to have a fullback that likes to cross the ball and then Mitrovic like head the ball in. So you want to have a fullback and a striker if you think that's going to happen. So it, those are the kind of things that you want to think about when you're playing soccer DFS, kind of more of a fact scenario based situation and uh, kind of, you know, the scenarios that you want to think about. So otherwise, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Hope you guys win a lot of money today on this slate. Um, this video was sponsored by True DFS. So please, please hit the like button for uh, below. Um, that would just mean a lot to us. Um, you know, that that's another reason why we, we would keep making these videos, previewing the slates. Otherwise, yeah, hope to see you at the top of the leaderboard and have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you.